Chapter 361, 50 Year Milestone, Part 1. Sha Kong knelt on the ground and said respectfully and piously, Disciple Sha Kong thanks Buddha for bestowing this name. Demon Buddha was the mighty supreme Buddha, the highest ranked Buddha in the Buddha zone. In terms of status, he was above Buddha Nanwu, and second only to the two Buddhist attendants. Sha Kong, you have awakened. You are no longer a blood fiend. It is time to convert or eliminate the blood fiend race. This is an opportunity for great merit. Yes, Supreme Buddha, Sha Kong understands. Go ahead then. Sha Kong stood up. Buddhist light wrapped around his body as he flew toward the blood fiend race's territory. The defeat of the blood fiend race in the Buddhist zone was imminent. After all, before his conversion, Sha Kong had been the blood fiend king. Chu Zan looked over. At this moment, he saw the fate of the blood fiend race in the Buddhist zone collapse and gather toward the Buddhist clan. In the past, he had not been able to see the blood fiend's race, so the fact that he could meant that the battle had been decided. Demon Buddha was really awesome. The Buddhist zone would become the first zone to overcome the blood fiend race. The fate of the Buddhist clan was soaring, and the Buddhist Tao principle was also advancing, along with the Buddhist world. Furthermore, Demon Buddha, Nanwu Buddha, as well as the Buddhist attendants, were getting stronger. Soon, a second zone would fall under the control of the heavenly Tao laws. Chu Zan deactivated the myriad heavenly mirror and turned his attention to Chu Yi and Chu Er. The two of them had yet to complete their transformation. They would only complete their transformation and reach the Tao realm after the origin Tao crystal completed its upgrade. Once they stepped into the Tao realm, they would become living beings in the truest sense of the word, and would no longer be soul puppets. Chu Zan estimated that it would probably take about 10 years to upgrade the origin Tao crystal, which would be around the time of the 60-year milestone. With the origin Tao crystal as the foundation, he could open up a true great Tao. Alongside the heavenly Tao laws, he would have two great Tao's. That would make him invincible within the Tao Yuan realm, right? The Buddhist zone had been secured and the blood fiend race had been defeated. Chu Zan could sense that the Buddhist zone's heavenly Tao laws were improving rapidly. Demon Buddha was already at the peak of the divine realm, as was Buddha Nanwu. The Tao realm was just a step away. Once the Buddhist zone was incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws, Chu Zan's cultivation level would rise again. When the northern zone was incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws, he had received 36 Tao principles. Would he receive the same reward from the Buddhist zone? Or even more? The number of Tao principles Chu Zan had grasped was close to 200, which was far beyond any other Tao Yuan realm cultivator. Finally, the 50 year milestone arrived. Chu Zan took a deep breath and waited for the system's reward. He sighed inwardly. Time really passed by so quickly. In the blink of an eye, 50 years had passed. He had not left the small courtyard for 50 years, but it was a small price to pay for his rapid increase in strength. You have remained in seclusion for 50 years and have hastened the progress of the Heavenly Tao Talisman Plan, which accelerated the development of the Great Tao Yuan Calamity. Your plan was meticulous and ambitious. You have been rewarded with the Chaos Scripture. Something was wrong. Chapter 362, 50 Year Milestone, Part 2 Chu Zan fell into deep thought as he looked at the system notification. How had he accelerated the development of the Great Tao Yuan Calamity? Was it due to the expansion of the heavenly Tao laws and the erosion of the laws of heaven and earth in the nine zones? This was an accident, it was not my intention, Chu Zan was helpless. He had thought that the reason the great Tao Yuan calamity had developed so quickly was due to the impending great Tao calamity. However, he now knew that it was his own doing, in any case, Chu Zan would not stop the expansion of the heavenly Tao laws. Without it, there was no way to quickly improve his strength. He did not dwell on the matter, and instead chose to focus on the system's reward. The reward for the 50-year milestone was the Chaos Scripture. The longer he stayed in the small courtyard, the greater the rewards. The Chaos Scripture was undoubtedly superior to his current cultivation method. Chu Zan examined the reward. The Chaotic Primogenitor could pry into the origin of Chaos, deriving the power of infinity from the Chaos and the Great Tao. Looking at the description of the Chaos Scripture, Chu Zan's heart trembled. He would be able to understand the mysteries of Chaos if he mastered it. In addition, he could also do the same with the Great Tao. It was a truly supreme technique. Chu Zan took a deep breath and received the reward. Boom. In that instant, it was as if Chu Zan did not exist in the courtyard. No one could see his figure or trace his presence. As for Chu Zan, he felt like an embryo in an egg, muddled and not knowing where he was. There was no time, no heaven and earth, and no living things. It was as if everything had yet to exist. After an unknown amount of time, a ray of purple light slowly appeared amidst the chaos. The purple light shone on the egg, as the purple light appeared and shone on the egg, the egg began to expand. It was getting bigger and bigger. Chu Zan felt like he was about to explode. His mind was filled with indescribable knowledge, and it was as if he was undergoing some kind of transformation. Countless years passed. One day, the egg suddenly exploded. With a boom, the chaos expanded and turned into a boundless space. The purple light disappeared when the egg exploded. 
Chaos continued to expand endlessly. After God knows how many years had passed, some rocks suddenly condensed and dust gradually appeared. Then, plants began to grow. After that, a living being was born in the chaos. In the years that followed, one living being after another was born from the chaos. As the number of living beings increased, battles also began. Chaos itself was still continuously expanding. After an unknown period of time, chaos began to shake. The vast and invisible Great Tao pierced through the chaos. It gradually formed the embryonic form of a world. When those living beings entered the world, a great battle erupted once again in order to fight for territory. Countless living beings fell, and their power was absorbed by the Great Tao. The Great Tao became stronger and stronger, invisible and omnipresent. The world was also changing, and there were more and more types of living beings. Gradually, the living beings born in the world began to fight against the living beings born from the chaos, and the battle lasted for a long time. Some of the creatures that were born from the chaos left the world and stopped fighting. Some were surrounded and killed. Gradually, the number of creatures born from chaos decreased until the last one in the world was surrounded and killed. Chaos continued to expand until, with a loud boom, the edge of the chaos collided with another chaotic force. Chu Zan suddenly woke up. Endless comprehension appeared in his mind. The mysteries of chaos appeared in his mind, he also seemed to understand the creation of the Great Tao. He personally experienced the origin of chaos, the birth of the Great Tao, and the formation of this world. It was as if Chu Zan had transformed into chaos, he had personally experienced the beginning and evolution of chaos and understood its mysteries. Although his cultivation level did not increase, Chu Zan seemed to have become more unfathomable. This time, he had actually been in a state of comprehension for nearly a month. Furthermore, although he understood its mysteries, they were still beyond his grasp. His cultivation level was insufficient to wield such power. Thinking back to his experience, Chu Zan had many questions. Was the world created by the Great Tao the world of the Nine Zones? If the chaos was beyond the Nine Zones, why could Hong Yuan Chu and the other Dao Yuan experts not go there? Were they too weak? Was that where those powerful races had gone to? Also, was the Nine Zones world the only one in the chaos? If there was more than one, could the chaos possibly have its own great Tao? Chu Zan then thought of the chaotic creatures. A portion of them had been killed in the world, while the rest left to the chaos. Would a powerful chaos creature create a new world? Chu Zan had the earth creation scripture and the heaven splitting brush, which allowed him to create a complete world in the chaos. As such, it did not seem too far fetched that others could do it as well, even without these supreme artifacts. Although there were many questions, there were also many answers. He now had knowledge of the chaos. Furthermore, he felt that the 10,000 mile long Tao path was a watershed. He was almost certain that only those who had reached that benchmark could travel to the chaos. Chu Zan then thought about Huang Long and the other creatures of the Great Tao. Would they be able to go to the chaos? What was the Great Tao's purpose anyway? Chapter 363 The Nine Zones Ocean, Part 1. Chu Zan left the questions alone for the time being. These questions would naturally be answered once he became strong enough. Cultivation was paramount, which meant that he had to stay focused on the Heavenly Tao Talisman plan. He turned his gaze to the Buddhist zone. The Heavenly Tao laws were about to take over the Buddhist zone, which would further increase his cultivation level. The Heavenly Tao laws were also making progress elsewhere. This was all due to his disciples' efforts in fighting for fate amidst the calamity. Still, now that he knew that the Heavenly Tao Talisman Plan was what caused the acceleration of the Great Tao Yuan Calamity, he became more cautious. At the very least, he should restrain the Heavenly Tao Laws from interfering with the ominous beings, as that might accelerate the Great Tao Calamity, which was far more terrifying. Chu Zan was not ready for that, at least not until he reached the Tao Yuan Realm. Some time passed, and the final two regions of the Buddhist Zone were finally incorporated into the Heavenly Tao Laws. Your Heavenly Tao Laws have taken over two regions in the Buddhist Zone, your cultivation level has advanced twice. The heavenly Tao laws continued to expand into the rest of the Buddhist zone. There were still other small territories beyond the five regions that had yet to be incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws, so the reward for taking over the Buddhist zone had not arrived yet. The northern region of the Buddhist zone bordered a vast ocean, and the heavenly Tao laws began to expand in that direction as well. The ocean of the nine zones were very special. Apart from the northern zone, the other eight zones were all connected to the ocean. Even the central zone was somehow connected to ocean. This was unknown territory for Chu Zan, and he quickly realized that the ocean was vast and likely contained countless secrets, as well as living beings. When the heavenly Tao laws expanded into the ocean from the Buddhist zone, he discovered the ocean race, which was just a generic term that encompassed the living beings of the ocean. In terms of population and size, they were actually qualified to stand among the human, demon and monster races as an overlord race. Chu Zan discovered that the ocean was filled with faint blood-colored spiritual energy. The battle here was ongoing as well. Wait. The ocean also bordered the northern region of the western zone. Did the hidden expert focus his attention there instead of trying to conquer the western zone? This opened up many new possibilities, so he had to watch over the ocean of the nine zones. 
Chu Zan felt that it was necessary to plant some pawns there to monitor the situation. The little evil king was currently the best candidate. The other disciples all had their own goals and plans, but he did not. His main goal was to take revenge on the evil son and restore his manhood. If the evil son was hiding in the ocean, would the little evil king go out to search for him? He definitely would. Chu Zan sent a message to Du Yuan, asking him to take the little evil king and the forces he had established out into the ocean. The opportunities out there would naturally be plentiful as well. Du Yuan was a ninth level divine realm cultivator currently. However, it was impossible for him to break through to the Tao realm given his level of talent. Chapter 364. The Nine Zones Ocean, Part 2. The only way he could do so was if his fate was transformed. There was not much hope for that in the Chaos Zone. The Blood Fiend race had basically been wiped out by Hei Yu. However, there were possibilities in the ocean. The little evil king was already a heaven realm expert. He too needed to fight for fate to break through to the divine realm, otherwise, he might not be strong enough to defeat the evil sun. There's no longer a need to stay in the chaos zone. The evil sun might have gone out into the ocean. Du Yuan spoke to the little evil king in a low voice. The little evil king was taken aback. Let's go out into the ocean. It was only after Du Yuan mentioned it that he realized that there was a vast ocean. There were countless opportunities in the ocean, and some undiscovered islands might contain valuable treasures. Some creatures in the ocean might have special abilities, perhaps he would be able to fix his third leg. Du Yuan stared blankly for a moment, he had originally prepared an excuse, but it was no longer needed. The little evil king ventured out into the ocean with the experts of the evil warding palace aboard two heaven-grade warships. The vast ocean was full of dangers, as soon as they ventured out, they were attacked. The blood fiends were in the ocean. Chu Zan did not pay too much attention to the little evil king and Du Yuan. He had sent them there to see if the hidden expert had made any moves in the ocean. If it was as he expected, then he had to be wary. When the heavenly Tao laws expanded into the ocean, he had to be careful to avoid being discovered. Chu Zan had already discovered some powerful ocean race creatures through the heavenly Tao talisman, as well as the blood fiend race that permeated the ocean. There were even ancient ruins and battlefields in the ocean. Chu Zan looked on silently. The ocean had lost some of its beauty due to the great Dao Yuan calamity. He could even see the corpses of some fish in the sea. Chu Zan even saw the corpse of a giant turtle floating on the sea. The corpse was surrounded by the blood colored spiritual energy. It had clearly died at the hands of a blood fiend. However, why was it not devoured by the blood fiend? He also saw a big fish that looked like a whale. It was hundreds of meters long, but it was swimming in the ocean on its last breath. The big fish was just an ordinary ocean creature, but its huge body was sufficient to indicate that it was physically strong. He could not tell why the big fish was dying. It did not seem to be injured or sick. Chu Zan saw another ocean creature comparable to a heaven realm expert. It was a shrimp-like creature, and one of its pincers had already been broken. Its body was covered in cracks and it was seriously injured. Its body was surrounded by blood-colored spiritual energy as well. Chu Zan had only seen a tiny bit of the Nine Zones Ocean, but what he saw was enough to shock him. The vast ocean had actually suffered greatly during the calamity, and less than 10% of the living creatures here were still alive. The situation here was even more tragic than the other zones. Chu Zan saw a blood-red flower floating atop the surface of the ocean. Its roots extended all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. The huge flower had bloomed and was absorbing the blood-colored spiritual energy. It exuded an indescribable evil feeling. Chu Zan saw no fewer than ten of these strange flowers. It was actually absorbing the blood-colored spiritual energy to grow. The flower had no intelligence, but was as powerful as a divine realm expert. Chu Zan fell into a state of deep thought. He had a hunch that the scarcity of ocean creatures was probably related to these flowers. Were these flowers planted by someone? If so, who? Was it that hidden expert from the western zone, or was there someone else behind the events that unfolded here? Chu Zan cursed inwardly. These B asterisk stars are messing things up. After I increase my strength, I'll beat them all up. Chu Zan did not know how big the nine zones ocean was, but he was sure it was at least the size of three or four zones. Half a month later, the Buddhist zone was finally completely incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws. Your heavenly Tao laws have taken over the Buddhist zone. You have been rewarded with 108 Tao principles. To Chu Zan's surprise, he received three times as many Tao principles than when the heavenly Tao laws had taken over the northern zone. It seemed that the Tao principle rewards would increase with every subsequent incorporation of a zone. Chapter 365. The Nine Zones Ocean, Part 3, Chu Zan received his reward. The 108 Tao principles surrounded him and all kinds of insights surged into his mind. At the same time, the chaotic energy in his body was also being consumed to fuse the 108 Tao principles with the other Tao principles, forming a miniature version of the Great Tao. While Chu Zan was comprehending the Tao law, he also felt his cultivation increase slightly. Unfortunately, it was not enough to push him to the 27th level of the Tao realm. Chu Zan let out a sigh. As expected, the further one advanced, the harder it was to break through. 
When the heavenly Tao laws had taken over the northern zone, he had been rewarded with 36 Tao principles, and his cultivation level had advanced as well. However, 108 Tao principles had not done the trick this time. Still, of the nine zones, two had now been incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws. This strengthened the heavenly Tao laws further and increased their rate of expansion in the other zones. If the heavenly Tao laws could take over the eastern zone as well, then the heavenly Tao laws of the Buddhist zone and northern zone would connect through the eastern zone. Chu Zan raised his head to observe the changes in the nine zones and found that the blood fiend calamity in the eastern and southern zones were showing signs of weakening. It was the same for the blood fiend race in the chaos zone. The blood fiend calamity in the monster zone had completely disappeared and had been replaced by the ominous beings. At the moment, only the central and western zone's blood fiends were still active. The western zone was still in a stalemate and the balance had not been broken. It seemed that the hidden expert wanted to keep things this way. Hei Yu was silently plotting in the central zone, biding her time for the right opportunity. Her enemy was the Tianyue Tower, an ancient force with a long history in the central zone. With her current strength, she was not strong enough to take revenge. Moreover, she still had to compete with Ji Dexon and the Ji family to vent her anger. Xu Zan frowned. The blood fiend race had weakened for no reason, as if they were going to fade away and disappear from the nine zones. This was not a good thing. This meant that a new calamity was coming. Chu Zan's expression turned serious. The ominous beings were much harder to deal with than the blood fiends. If the grayish black gas became a little thicker and stronger, even Dao realm cultivators would end up contaminated. He had to reach the Dao Yuan realm in the next 10 years. He sat back in his chair and continued to relax. Other than the desert, there was another place in the western zone's northern region that was connected to the ocean. Waves crashed onto the shore. The water was a faint blood red color, and within that blood red color, there was a faint grayish black gas. On a rocky island in the sea of the northern region of the western zone, a person was sitting cross-legged. Black gas surrounded him, and his face was filled with pain. A faint painful roar escaped his throat, but it was soon suppressed. The black gas became thicker and thicker. Blood began to ooze out of his body, and new blood was being produced. The new blood was tinged black. Chapter 366 The ancestor of the demon race the figure on the rocky island trembled. As blood gushed out and new blood produced, his roars began to grow louder. It was like shedding one's skin and bones, the pain was extreme. It was not just his blood that was being replaced, but his bloodline as well. With the transformation of his bloodline, his strength was also increasing, he quickly sensed an invisible barrier. It was a barrier that countless experts could not cross. There were many divine realm experts, but almost none of them broke through to the Tao realm. Being able to even touch this barrier was unbelievable. As the black blood became denser, the invisible barrier began to thin. Hold on. I have to hold on. The invisible barrier was getting thinner and thinner. It seemed that a light poke would break this thin barrier. However, his face and body were twisted, he had reached the limit of his endurance. A voice rang out in his ears, You've already reached your limit, but you'll be able to break through in time. The black gas disappeared, revealing the face of the man on the rocky island. It was the Grand Elder of the Demon Race. The Grand Elder knelt on the ground and said respectfully, Ancestor, my talent is limited. The Demon Race has gone through a great change, and there are still a few descendants with superior talent. I hope that Ancestor can awaken their bloodlines. The voice was silent for a long time before a mumble could be heard. Buddhist clan. Ancestor, those traitors have betrayed our Demon Race. They must be killed, the Grand Elder said through gritted teeth. Thick demonic power flowed through his body, he had become much stronger. He had almost lost all hope and thought that the demon race would never rise up again, and might even be exterminated. The former demon kings were just sitting by and doing nothing. In fact, he even heard one demon king chanting, Amitabha. During that moment, his entire body turned cold and he was filled with despair. While he was fleeing, he accidentally stumbled into the northern region of the western zone. It was then this mysterious existence suddenly contacted him. He was the true ancestor of the demon race, he discovered that the current demon race was only from the side branch of the demon race. Their bloodline was not pure, so they could not display the full potential of the demon race. He begged the ancestor to help. Due to some reasons, the ancestor could not act personally, but could purify his bloodline and increase his strength and talent. It was a pity that he was limited by his talent. The bloodline he could awaken was limited and he could not directly break through the barrier of the Tao realm. Our demon race is incomparably powerful. How could we suffer such a fate? The so-called Buddhist clan but an ant. When I return, I will destroy them with a flip of my hand, the mysterious voice said coldly. However, the time is not right yet. You can pick a talented junior and send him to me. I will instill demonic power into him and purify his bloodline. You all have to make some preparations for my return. The voice rang out in the Grand Elder's mind. It was filled with dignity and dominance. This world will eventually belong to us demons. How can mere ants like the human race be the overlord of the nine zones? The Grand Elder trembled in excitement. Ancestor, don't worry. 
We'll do everything we can to prepare for your return, even if we have to give up our lives. The demon race ancestor was going to return. The Buddhist clan and human race, just you wait. The nine zones will eventually belong to us. And those former demon kings, you'll pay for ignoring the demon race's plight. Just you wait. The Grand Elder said respectfully, Ancestor, there were many Tao realm demon kings of the past, but they just watched as the demon race was destroyed. I begged for help many times but they didn't do anything. They even betrayed us and became Buddhists. Ancestor, please punish these unfilial descendants and traitors. His voice was filled with anger. There will come a day when this matter is settled. If they enter the nine zones, tell them to come here. I will refine them into demonic puppets and hand them over to you. The demon race Grand Elder was overjoyed. Thank you, Ancestor. I will definitely do my best. The Grand Elder immediately left the rocky island and journeyed into the vast ocean. He was about to break through to the Tao realm. Furthermore, he wanted to bring the few heavens blessed from the demon race over so that the ancestor could purify their bloodline. Meanwhile, in the mysterious ancient battlefield in the northern region of the western zone. In front of the stone house, two blood fiends knelt on the ground. Both blood fiends were Tao realm experts. A voice came from the stone house. Are there any other changes in the nine zones? My lord, someone in the chaos zone has purified the blood fiends in one fell swoop, and now the blood fiend race in the chaos zone is gradually weakening. Chapter 367 Taoist flying cloud, something dangerous has surfaced in the monster zone, but we're unsure of the details. The war in the central zone is still ongoing. Tao realm blood fiends have appeared. The former human king has also killed several Tao realm blood fiends in the central zone. The mysterious existence in the stone house listened silently. After the blood fiend finished speaking, he asked, are there any special geniuses in the nine zones? Yes, the most eye-catching one is the young master of the G family, G Dexon. He killed Tao Realm Blood Fiend and is known as the number one prodigy of the Nine Zones. There was no sound from the stone house for a long time. Just as the two Blood Fiends thought the conversation had ended, the voice spoke again. Is there anything unusual happening to the Nine Zones? The two Blood Fiends pondered for a moment and said, We don't think so. After a while, the voice said, Maintain the balance of the situation. Don't advance rashly and wait for my orders. Yes, my lord. The two Blood Fiends retreated. The stone house was still quiet, and only after a long time did a puzzled mutterings emerge. Nothing unusual. Then why do I feel that there's something wrong with the nine zones? Is this a phenomenon that only occurs when this Tao Yuan is about to end or is there someone interfering with the nine zones secretly? Is it the celestial race or the immortal race, G. Dexon? The stone house trembled for a moment, and a disdainful cold snort could be heard before it went silent again. Central Zone, Alliance Headquarters. G. Dexon stood at the peak of the mountain, his eyes sparkling as he looked at the nine zones he too felt that there was something wrong with the nine zones. He also thought that it was due to the ending of this Taoyuan. However, he was more concerned about his status in the human race. The former human king, Feng Kong, had suddenly appeared and killed Tao realm blood fiends. Feng Kong was currently the strongest human in the central zone, and his authority in the alliance was growing stronger and stronger. Ji Dexon was confused. Logically speaking, there should have been Tao realm cultivators entering the calamity by now. Why were there no Tao realm experts? Feng Kong was an exception. He had not left the nine zones and had just recovered. Furthermore, there was news of the ominous beings in the monster zone. The great Taoyuan calamity was progressing in a strange direction. He had already begun his research on how to deal with these ominous beings. He was not too worried. Based on the information he had received thus far, the ominous beings were too weak and low-leveled. In the long history of the celestial race, this was not the first time they had faced similar beings. The celestial beings could use a type of divine light that could exterminate and purify such creatures. At the critical moment, he could impart this divine light technique to some of the human race's powerful beings. This was also part of his plan. In fact, G. Dexon hoped that the ominous beings would appear in the central zone soon. That would give him the opportunity to display his might and spread the cultivation method of the celestial race's divine light technique. His fate would definitely increase rapidly when that happened. The nine zones were very special. Back then, the celestial race had been expelled by the great Tao of the nine zones. Now, they were trying to return and fight for fate. Time passed day by day. The blood fiend calamity of the nine zones seemed to be coming to an end. However, Chu Zan knew that the nine zones would not return to a peaceful state anytime soon. The great Dao Yuan calamity was not over yet. He took out the Chaos Dao mirror and began searching for Dao realm experts and above. There had not been any additions to the great Dao communication group. The needle on the mirror started to spin, and a white dot appeared. Moreover, this white dot was actually at the edge of the mirror. This was the first time he had encountered such a situation. Chu Zan was stunned. Did this mean that the expert detected by the Chaos Dao mirror was at the limits of its detection range? The white dot began to grow bigger. Then, an image projection appeared. However, the scene was a little blurry. 
Chu Zan was unsure whether this was due to it being so far away, or because there was some kind of interference. The image was of a sage-like old man. At first glance, he gave off a carefree and otherworldly feeling. The moment Chu Zan saw the old man, his first instinct told him that this person was a member of the celestial race. He had actually stumbled on a celestial race expert? Chu Zan's heart tightened. Could the other party have entered the Nine Zones? The person's information slowly appeared on the Chaos Dao mirror. Flying Cloud, a celestial race saint and an ancient cultivator. He has transcended the Great Dao Calamity and opened his Dao path for longer than a Great Dao era. Chu Zan took a deep breath. This time, he had found a real big shot. The celestial race's saints were equivalent to Dao Yuan realm experts. This Taoist flying cloud was incredible. He had transcended the Great Dao Calamity. He was definitely a top-notch expert. Ancient cultivator was also a respectful title given to those who had transcended the Great Dao Calamity. Chu Zan took a deep breath. He would not be exposed by this expert, right? Would this person be able to locate the origin Dao crystal and then attack him? Chu Zan took a deep breath. Although Flying Cloud was powerful, the origin Dao crystal was a special item created by the system. Moreover, from the information he had obtained so far, the immortal, celestial, and demon races had been expelled by the Great Dao of the Nine Zones and could not enter. If the other party was outside the Nine Zones, the chances of him being able to locate the origin Dao crystal were slim. However, he could not deceive such an expert. Flying Cloud was an ancient cultivator who had transcended the Great Dao Calamity, he would not be easy to deceive. Still, Chu Zan was not flustered, he had once transformed into chaos and experienced its birth and evolution, so his horizons had been expanded. He had comprehended the mysteries of chaos and the Great Dao, so his knowledge rivaled even these ancient cultivators. What he lacked was an understanding of the immortal, celestial, demon, and other races at the beginning of the Nine Zones and the first few Great Dao eras. If one lacked some knowledge, it would be easy for flaws to appear and be detected. Chu Zan began to absorb a wisp of the other party's aura into the origin Dao crystal to establish a connection with him. Of course, he did not add him into the group. With such a big shot in the group, if he wanted to fool Hong Yuanchu and the others, he would have to think twice. He also had to be on guard against the other party exposing him. At the very least, he had to at least grow stronger before adding him into the group. In any case, there was truth mixed into his lies. The so-called Great Dao Calamity really did exist. It was not something he conjured out of thin air. This time, the absorption of the Wisp of Dao Aura took some time. From this, one could see how strong Flying Cloud was. This also made Chu Zan realize that the Chaos Dao Mirror's level was not high enough and had a limit. The reason it could absorb the Wisp of the Aura of Flying Cloud was probably because the other party allowed it. Otherwise, the Chaos Dao Mirror would not be able to forcefully extract it. Of course, this was also due to the limitations of Chu Zan's own strength. Chapter 368, Probing and Exchanging Information, Part 1 Fellow Taoist, how are you? Chu Zan established a connection with Flying Cloud. Are you a fellow Taoist from the ancient world or the Nine Zones? Flying Cloud asked Chu Zan a question, the ancient world? Chu Zan was helpless. This was the disadvantage of lacking knowledge. He did not even know what the ancient world the other party was talking about was. Another world beyond the Nine Zones. Chu Zan paused for a moment, and Flying Cloud seemed to understand. Since you are not from the ancient Chaos world, you must be from the Nine Zones, he continued. The ancient Chaos world. This meant that the three races went to the ancient chaos world after leaving the nine zones. However, he did not know where the ancient chaos world was, nor what it was. Another world. Chu Zan recalled the process of him being transformed into chaos. During the evolution of chaos, before the appearance of the nine zones, there were even giant rocks, like meteorites and asteroids in the chaos. On some of these, chaotic plants and lifeforms grew. Could that be the ancient chaos world? However, there was more than one such place. Moreover, these places would drift within the chaos and were not fixed in one place. Of course, this had been then, and might be different now. What was certain was that the ancient chaos world was one or perhaps a combination of such places. It was not a complete world, and was different from the Nine Zones. There's actually an existence like you in the Nine Zones. As expected of the first world created by the chaos, flying cloud side. Nine Zones. He could not admit that he was someone who had opened his Tao path in the Nine Zones. Otherwise, that would make him seem like a junior. Chu Zan said, fellow Taoist, you've misunderstood. I'm not from the Nine Zones. I've just traveled through the chaos for countless years and am passing through the Nine Zones. During his state of enlightenment, he had seen countless powerful chaotic beings exploring the chaos. These chaotic beings were far more powerful than those who had been besieged and killed in the Nine Zones. Chu Zan knew very well that he knew very little about the long history of the ancient chaos world in the Nine Zones. Common knowledge in the eyes of existences like Flying Cloud were undiscovered secrets to Chu Zan. If he wanted his status as a big shot to be preserved, he could only give himself the identity of someone who traveled the chaos and did not understand the current situation. Chu Zan finished setting up his identity and continued, 
The ancient chaos world that fellow Taoist mentioned, is it a world formed by the gathering of giant rocks in the chaos? A. This mysterious and powerful being was not someone who opened their Tao path in the nine zones, but a chaotic being? Or was it a powerful existence from ancient times? Flying Cloud breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. How could there be such a strong person in the nine zones today? The ancient chaos world is indeed formed by giant rocks in the chaos. It has been in the chaos for countless years, said Flying Cloud. Since Chu Zan was able to ask that question, it meant that he had a very good understanding of the chaos. He was definitely not someone who opened his Tao path in the nine zones. The current Tao Yuan experts of the nine zones would not even know about the existence of the chaos, much less the ancient chaos world. Chu Zan took this opportunity to ask about the ancient chaos world to gain a general understanding of this matter. Flying Cloud answered his questions one by one in a very easygoing manner. The ancient chaos world was not a complete world. Those who could survive in the ancient chaos world were at least heaven realm cultivators. Otherwise, they could not withstand the gravitational pull of the ancient chaos world. There were not many living beings in the ancient chaos world, far less than the nine zones. He also confirmed that the immortal, celestial and demon races had been living in the ancient chaos world after they were expelled from the nine zones. Flying Cloud also asked him some questions about the chaos. This was not difficult for Chu Zan, so he chose to reply with some unimportant details. He avoided mentioning anything about the mysteries of chaos. Flying Cloud did not probe further. Both sides were obviously trying to test each other. After failing to figure out Chu Zan's strength, Flying Cloud began to take him seriously, feeling that this was an expert no weaker than himself. Fellow Taoist Chu, are you in the Nine Zones? Yes and no. Chu Zan naturally would not admit or deny it. He finally understood why all the powerful experts liked to talk like this, which was to maintain an air of mystery. The Nine Zones are currently facing the Great Dao Yuan Calamity. What are your thoughts on that, fellow Taoist Chu? Flying Cloud seemed to be very concerned about the situation unfolding in the Nine Zones. Chu Zan even suspected that Feng Kong's Jade Crystal Palace might belong to Flying Cloud. Of course, it was just a guess and he could not be sure. It's just a minor calamity, so why bother? Chu Zan said without a care. The calamities of the Nine Zones are not simple. They may look like minor calamities, but minor calamities can also lead to major calamities. Fellow Taoist Flying Cloud, are you talking about the Great Tao Calamity? Fellow Taoist Chu also knows about this. Of course. However, the Great Tao Calamity of the Nine Zones should not affect fellow Taoist Flying Cloud, right? Taoist Flying Cloud was silent for a moment. He then said, Fellow Taoist Chu has been traveling around the chaos and is not familiar with this. The Great Tao Calamity does not only belong to the Nine Zones. We all come from the Nine Zones, and the Great Tao of the Nine Zones encompasses the chaos. Who can completely transcend it? Chapter 369, Probing and Information Exchange, Part 2 Chu Zan listened silently. The Great Tao of the Nine Zones had exceeded his expectations. Even existences like Taoist Flying Cloud could not avoid the effects of the Great Tao Calamity. The Great Tao of the Nine Zones is the first Great Tao in the chaos. No one can escape it. We opened our Tao paths based on the Great Tao of the Nine Zones, not independently in the chaos. As far as I know, no one can open a Tao path independently in the chaos. Although Taoist Flying Cloud had not said it outright, he was already questioning why Chu Zan was not affected by the Great Tao Calamity. Chu Zan's face was calm. I witnessed the birth of the Great Tao of the Nine Zones and gained some enlightenment, from which I opened my Tao path. After that, I traveled through the chaos. Perhaps because of that, I'm not affected by the Great Tao Calamity. Come and worship me. Even if you're an ancient cultivator, you're still a junior compared to me. I've experienced the birth of the chaos and the Great Tao of the Nine Zones anyway. Chu Zan was not worried at all that he would reveal any flaws. In terms of understanding of chaos, no one could compare to him. In addition, he was currently cultivating the chaos scripture. Others might not be able to open a Tao path in the chaos, but Chu Zan could use the chaos scripture to do so. Although he could, Chu Zan did not plan on doing so, he would stick to his heavenly Tao talisman plan. Taoist Flying Cloud's heart skipped a beat. The other party was actually such an ancient existence? Did this not mean that he was even stronger than him? It made sense then, that Taoist Chu Zan had managed to find him, but he had failed to find any traces of Chu Zan. Fellow Taoist Chu is actually such an existence. Taoist Flying Cloud sighed. Although I have been around for a long time, I don't know much about the current nine zones in the ancient chaos world. I hope fellow Taoist Flying Cloud can enlighten me. Exploring the chaos is extremely difficult, and sometimes I even feel like it's a waste of time. Chu Zan sighed. Then, the two of them continued to talk about the nine zones, the ancient chaos world, and the mysteries of chaos. It was inevitable for them to test each other. Chu Zan learned that Taoist Flying Cloud could not enter the nine zones. The immortal, celestial, and demon races could not set foot in the nine zones, and would be rejected if they got too close. Chu Zan was very curious. Why were the three races expelled from the nine zones by the Great Tao? 
Taoist Flying Cloud did not elaborate, simply saying that the three races had been too ambitious and touched upon some taboos. Chu Zan suspected that the taboo mentioned by Taoist Flying Cloud was most likely related to an attempt to control the Great Tao of the Nine Zones. This was worrying. In this case, could his Heavenly Tao Talisman plan really succeed? Would he end up like the three races? Chu Zan felt that he needed to sort out his plan properly to avoid the same outcome. Right now, Taoist Flying Cloud was outside the Nine Zones, what had drawn him there was the impending Great Tao Calamity. As an existence who had transcended the Great Tao Calamity, he knew very well how terrifying it was. There had once been an extremely powerful celestial race saint who was above him in terms of seniority and strength, he had even transcended more than one Great Tao Calamity. Despite this, he had died during the last Great Tao Calamity. Chu Zan mentioned the ominous beings of the Nine Zones and asked in a curious tone if such a thing had ever appeared in the previous Great Tao Yuan Calamities in the Nine Zones. It was then he found out that ominous beings had appeared more than once in the Nine Zones Great Tao Yuan Calamities. The most serious one was when the ominous beings spread all over the Nine Zones, and countless races were wiped out and transformed into ominous beings. Furthermore, even after the Great Tao Yuan Calamity ended, the ominous beings did not disappear, appearing randomly in the Nine Zones or in ominous battlefields. Taoist Flying Cloud mentioned that an ominous race had once appeared in the Nine Zones as well. They were extremely powerful, and the immortal, celestial, and demon races had to join forces to destroy them. Chu Zan was shocked. The strength of the ominous race was evident just from this fact alone. After understanding the ominous beings of the past, the current ominous beings were just a small matter that was not worth mentioning. They exchanged information. Chu Zan learned about the history of the three races from Taoist Flying Cloud, which naturally involved the history of the Nine Zones, as well as the situation in the ancient chaos world. In return, Taoist Flying Cloud asked him about the mysteries of the chaos. Chu Zan gave out some relatively unimportant ones. Finally, he asked about the current situation in the Nine Zones. Chu Zan gave a brief explanation without mentioning Ji Dexon, or Feng Kong's Jade Crystal Palace, nor the hidden expert in the Western Zone. Since the three races could not enter the Nine Zones, the hidden expert in the Western Zone must have used some sort of medium to lay out his plans while waiting for an opportunity. The threat was much smaller if that was the case compared to if that hidden expert was in the Nine Zones. Chapter 370 Probing and Information Exchange, Part 3 As such, there was no reason to be too afraid, Perhaps his heavenly Tao laws would have taken over the entire Nine Zones before the hidden expert actually entered the Nine Zones. Chu Zan benefited a lot from the exchange with Taoist Flying Cloud, and it was likewise for the latter. Chu Zan did mention some of the mysteries of the chaos that the other party could gain some insights from. For example, the topic of opening an independent Tao path. Chu Zan was sure that if Taoist Flying Cloud wanted to escape the Great Tao Calamity, he had to open up his own Tao path in the chaos. After a series of exchanges, both of them had gained something and were satisfied they also gained a good impression of each other. After this exchange, Chu Zan summarized the information he had obtained from Taoist Flying Cloud. First off, the Nine Zones were the first world born from the chaos, and the Great Tao of the Nine Zones was also the first Great Tao in the chaos, which made them special. For example, it would be easier to comprehend the Great Tao if one cultivated in the Nine Zones. Second, the three races had once controlled the laws of heaven and earth of the Nine Zones, and even established the laws of heavenly punishment. However, they had merely controlled the laws and not replaced them. The main reason was that the three races held each other back, forming a balance. After a few Great Tao eras, the three races and some of the other overlord races tried to join forces to control the Great Tao and completely eliminate the Great Tao Calamity. In the end, they failed and suffered a backlash. Their entire races were expelled by the Great Tao. Third, the ancient chaos world was not only inhabited by the three races, but also the indigenous beings of the ancient chaos world. Now, it was relatively peaceful there. It had been a long time since a battle between top experts broke out. However, conflicts and battles between lower-level cultivators were plentiful. There were also humans in the ancient chaos world. Unlike the humans of the Nine Zones, the humans of the ancient chaos world had extremely strong bodies and immense strength. They were one of the indigenous beings of the ancient chaos world. In ancient times, they had come to the Nine Zones and were known as the giant race. It was rumored that they were the ones who left the body tempering techniques to the human race in the Nine Zones, which was also one of the fundamental reasons why the human race had managed to establish themselves in the Nine Zones. After Chu Zan compiled the information he had received from Taoist Flying Cloud, he came to a conclusion. The three races all wanted to find an opportunity to return to the Nine Zones again. This was because they wanted to find a way to completely transcend the Great Tao Calamity, and also to obtain some opportunities. As the first world to be born in the chaos, the Nine Zones naturally contained some special opportunities. They were all waiting for the opportunity to send some young geniuses into the Nine Zones when the Great Tao Calamity started. At the very least, they had to leave their inheritances in the Nine Zones. As long as the inheritances of the three races existed in the Nine Zones, 
they could slowly wear down the rejection of the Great Tao with time. The demon race had left behind mixed blood demon race descendants in the Nine Zones. After such a long time, the Great Tao's rejection of the demon race had weakened slightly. Chu Zan was almost certain that the hidden expert was from the demon race. This posed a bit of a headache, he and the demon race were mortal enemies. The mixed blood descendants of the demon race who were left in the Nine Zones had all been converted to Buddhists, and the demon zone was now the Buddhist zone. He had to increase his strength, or else he would not be able to deal with the hidden expert's revenge. Mo Tu and the other demon race cultivators were not weak, could he find a chance to trick them into fighting with the progenitor demon race? Chapter 371, The Western Zone's Hidden Expert, Part 1 In any case, Chu Zan felt that he had a better chance of controlling the Great Tao than the three races. The core of the Heavenly Tao was the Heavenly Tao Talisman, which was always connected to the Great Tao and was nurtured by the aura of the Great Tao through the Origin Tao Crystal. Therefore, there was a much lower chance of the Heavenly Tao laws being detected and rejected. Of course, after replacing the laws of Heaven and Earth in the Nine Zones, the difficult part would be taking over the Great Tao itself. Chu Zan pondered. Perhaps he could merge the Heavenly Tao laws into the Great Tao and use it as a medium to control it. The danger of merging the Heavenly Tao laws with the Great Tao was that there was a chance that the Great Tao would take over the Heavenly Tao laws, and not vice versa. The Heavenly Tao laws had to be strong enough. Thus, Chu Zan had a general direction in which to plan things out. Time passed day by day and, in the blink of an eye, half a year had passed. Although the Nine Zones' blood fiend calamity had weakened, it had by no means ended. Furthermore, the ominous beings were still running rampant in the Monster Zone. However, Hu Tianya had led the monster race and managed to take back half of the monster zone. On this day, Ren Chongha returned. Greetings, Master. Chu Zan looked at Ren Chongha. His fate had already transformed, and he was now a person who shouldered the fate of the Great Tao thanks to the fact that he had destroyed that ominous artifact. Moreover, Ren Chongha was one step away from reaching the Tao realm. In fact, Chu Zan had asked Ren Chongha to come back so that he could become the first person to break through to the Tao realm in the northern zone which would further strengthen the heavenly Tao laws and raise the upper limit of cultivation here. You already have the opportunity to break through. If you have anything you don't understand, you can ask me, Chu Zan said. Many thanks, Master. Ren Chongha then asked the questions he had about breaking through to the Tao realm. Chu Zan answered them one by one and explained some of the insights of the heavenly Tao to him. After clearing up his doubts about cultivation, Ren Chongha said respectfully, Master, while I was returning, I encountered a strange thing in the desolate ancient zone. Ren Chongha explained in detail about the mutated thunderfish he had encountered in the strange grayish black gas. Chu Zan was surprised. The ominous artifact that Ren Chongha destroyed actually originated from this? Moreover, the strange grayish black gas was already spreading through the desolate ancient zone, and a more powerful version compared to the grayish black gas in the monster zone as well. This strange grayish black gas is related to the Great Tao Calamity. Don't touch it. It can contaminate your body and cause you to transform into a mindless ominous being. The Great Tao Calamity is coming, and misfortune will eventually descend. Cultivate well. Only when you are strong can you survive the Great Tao Calamity, Chu Zan explained. The grayish black gas in the Nine Zones all originated from that strange black power on the Great Tao. Even a terrifying expert like Taoist Flying Cloud would avoid it. Back then, when the grayish black gas had contaminated the Nine Zones and given birth to the ominous race, it had taken the combined power of all three races to exterminate the ominous race. Furthermore, the battle had not been without sacrifices, and many Dao Yuan realm experts had fallen. It was also because of that incident that the three races had attempted to eliminate the Great Dao Calamity, which resulted in their expulsion from the Nine Zones. Chapter 372, The Western Zone's Hidden Expert, Part 2 Heck, even Taoist Flying Cloud and the other experts in the ancient chaos world were worried about the Great Dao Calamity of that era repeating itself. Ren Changhe's heart trembled when he heard this, if this great Tao calamity was one that even his master had reservations about, then things were dire. If he wanted to survive the calamity, he had to get stronger. Ren Chongha did not stick around for long. He left after expressing his thanks and searched for a place to enter secluded cultivation in the northern zone to prepare for his breakthrough to the Tao realm. Three months later, your heavenly Tao laws have taken over the fourth region of the chaos zone. Your cultivation level has advanced. 27th level of the Tao realm, things were progressing smoothly. Once Ren Chongha broke through, the strengthened Heavenly Tao laws would accelerate the progress of the Heavenly Tao Talisman plan. Chu Zong continued to try to figure out a perfect plan to accomplish what the three races had not. After another three months, a ray of light streaked across the sky over the northern zone, alarming everyone. Was the Great Tao Yuan Calamity finally about to descend upon the northern zone? If that was the case, then they might be in trouble. Many experts from the northern zone had left to support the other zones. The streak of light swept across the northern zone, following which, an inexplicable aura spread out. The Divine Realm experts in the Northern Zone seemed to experience an epiphany. The path beyond the Divine Realm had been open. 
It was not the great Daoyuan calamity. The streak of light persisted for two hours before it disappeared. The spiritual energy in the northern zone started to increase gradually. The divine realm was no longer the limit. Of course, this streak of light was due to Ren Chongha having broken through to the Dao realm. Your in-name disciple, Ren Chongha, has broken through to the Dao realm. You have been rewarded with a lump of chaotic energy. The third day after Ren Changhe's breakthrough, your heavenly Dao laws have taken over the fifth region of the chaos zone. Your cultivation level has advanced. Half of the chaos zone had been incorporated into the heavenly Dao laws. 28th level of the Dao realm. Another half a month passed, and the improvement of the heavenly Dao laws from Ren Changhe's breakthrough came to an end. Your heavenly Dao laws have taken over the southern region of the western zone. Your cultivation level has advanced. 29th level of the Dao realm. Chu Zan was overjoyed. By the time the stronger Dao realm cultivators entered calamity, Chu Zan estimated that he would have reached the Dao Yuan realm. After that, the situation in the nine zones changed slightly. Demon Buddha led the Buddhist clan's experts and left the Buddhist zone. They entered the western zone to support Ding Yu and Shao Liang. The blood fiends of the western region were too difficult to kill, and were becoming more and more cunning. With the support of the Buddhist zone's experts, the blood fiend race would probably be beaten back, and would be forced to hold themselves up in the northern region of the western zone. Chu Zan wanted to see what the hidden expert would do when that happened. As expected, after the arrival of Demon Buddha and Sha Kong, the previous blood fiend king of the Buddhist zone, the blood fiend race began to retreat. Unlike normal blood fiends, who would fight harder and more brutally in this situation, these intelligent blood fiends retreated to preserve their strength and their lives. In less than three months, the eastern region of the western zone, and the heavenly Dao laws quickly took the opportunity to infiltrate the region. The human army led by Ding Yu and Shao Liang, supported by Demon Buddha and the experts of the Buddhist race, approached the northern region of the western zone. A great battle erupted once again. This battle lasted for more than half a year. In the end, the blood fiends were defeated and the allied human Buddhist army entered the northern region. This was the first time that the human race had set foot in the north region since the start of the great Dao Yuan calamity. The blood-colored spiritual energy that filled the air was extremely dense. Countless blood fiends began to emerge. Ding Yu and the others set up a large formation to defend and stabilize the territory they had seized. They relied on time to slowly wear down the blood-colored spiritual energy. It would take a long time to take back the northern region. Your heavenly Dao laws have taken over the eastern region of the western zone. Your cultivation level has advanced. Chapter 373, The Western Zone's Hidden Expert, Part 3. The Allied Army had entered the northern region, which meant that they had finally reached the territory controlled by the Hidden Expert. Xu Zan paid attention to the changes taking place in the northern region of the western zone. If things got out of hand, Dao Realm blood fiends might make their appearance here. Since Ren Chang had broken through and stabilized his cultivation, Xu Zan asked him to go and act according to the situation. Northern region, ancient battlefield. The two blood fiends knelt in front of the stone house. Trash. A cold voice came from the stone house. The two blood fiends trembled in fear. After a long while, a branch floated out of the stone house. It was as black as ink and was surrounded by an unknown aura. As soon as the tree branch appeared, it seemed to encounter the rejection of some sort of power and started to crack. However, after a few cracks appeared, it stopped cracking and the power disappeared. Go. If necessary, you can take action. You must protect the northern region, the voice in the stone house said coldly. Yes, my lord. The two blood fiends were overjoyed. They took the branch and left. On this day, there was an unforeseen event in the northern region of the western zone. The blood fiends descended from the sky like blood rain, and swept toward the allied army's camp. Boom. Retreat quickly. The Allied Army retreated while a group of Divine Realm experts charged forward to face the Blood Fiend experts who suddenly attacked. The human experts' expressions changed drastically upon contact. Another battle broke out. This time, the Allied Army was on the back foot, and their experts were suffering injuries. Ding Yu and Xiao Liang both attacked to stop the Blood Fiend experts. Torrent of 10,000 swords. Sword Qi swept across the blood red sky and, in an instant, six or seven Blood Fiends were destroyed. Everlasting war. The long spear pierced through the sky, destroying every blood fiend that came into contact with it. At this moment, Ding Yu and Xiao Liang revealed their strength. Mighty heavenly dragon. Demon Buddha put his palms together. The Buddhist light around him condensed into an illusory dragon. The three of them were extremely powerful and actually blocked the blood fiend experts' attacks. At the rear of the blood fiend army, the two blood fiend leaders had gloomy expressions as they stared at Ding Yu and the other two. If not for Ding Yu and Xiao Liang, the western zone would have already fallen, and if this Baldi had not come to help, the blood fiends would not have lost the eastern region and retreated to the northern region. One of them stuck the black branch in his hand into the ground. With a whoosh, the branch instantly sprouted, turning into a strange black tree that was hundreds of meters tall. Then, the branches gathered together and transformed into a terrifying black hand, 
sweeping toward Ding Yu and the others. Danger. An intense life and death crisis had suddenly descended. Ding Yu's expression changed drastically, retreat quickly. He rushed forward, trying to buy time for Xiao Liang and Demon Buddha to escape. Xiao Liang and Demon Buddha cursed inwardly. Why did they not escape together? They basically moved at the same speed anyway, so why bother trying to buy time? At this moment, Sword Qi erupted from Ding Yu's body. At this moment, it was as if his entire body had transformed into a divine sword. I'm the eldest senior brother, so this is my responsibility. Xiao Liang and Demon Buddha almost vomited blood. It was not like we did not acknowledge his status. So why was he trying to act tough? The two of them gritted their teeth and charged forward. One of them was full of fighting spirit, which created the illusory image of a ferocious warrior behind him. One of them had a huge dragon wrapped around his body and was covered in Buddhist light. The black hand had already surpassed the power of the divine realm. Even before it approached, Ding Yu felt as if he was about to suffocate. I, Ding Yu, have no woman in my heart. I can kill a god with my sword. Kill. Chapter 374, The Western Zone's Hidden Expert Part 4 His sword Qi streaked across the sky toward the black hand. Boom. The sword Qi shattered into pieces. Ding Yu spat out blood, and the divine sword in his hand shattered. Kill. He attacked again, this time even stronger. However, his attack was still unable to block the black hand. Boom. Xiao Liang struck with his spear. Demon Buddha's mighty heavenly dragon charged at the black hand. However, the black hand shattered both attacks. The two of them were hurled back, injured. Arg. Ding Yu roared. Even though there were wounds all over his body, and his divine soul was shaking, he still did not retreat. Way of the Supreme Sword. Boom. Ding Yu's entire body erupted with strength. A vast sword chi that seemed to be able to tear the sky apart and shatter the heavens appeared. Xiao Liang and Demon Buddha stopped vomiting blood and cursed in their hearts. Was Ding Yu crazy? Ding Yu was using his own body as a sword. If his attack was defeated, he would die. Xiao Liang turned around and looked at Lu Piao Piao. He gritted his teeth, and a determined look filled his eyes. Among Chu Zan's disciples, Ding Yu and Xiao Liang were the strongest in terms of combat talent and pure combat power. Ding Yu turned his body into a sword, so how could he lose to Ding Yu? His fighting spirit boiled, and a long spear instantly appeared in the sky. His endless battle intent made the sky tremble, and even the blood-colored spiritual energy was extinguished. Demon Buddha was dumbfounded. Were his two fellow disciples crazy? Unfortunately, he could not follow suit. He cultivated Buddhism, so his path was different. Still, he recondensed his mighty heavenly dragon and attacked as well. The sword and spear crashed into the black hand. The black hand stopped, and then slowly pressed down. Demon Buddha's mighty heavenly dragon crumbled and retreated. Suddenly, the world fell silent. Endless sword intent descended. It was neither sharp nor murderous, but as gentle as a breeze. However, the sword that Ding Yu had transformed into pierced the black hand. Gradually, the tip of the sword emerged from the back of the hand and kept piercing forward. All of a sudden, every blade of grass, every tree, every wisp of spiritual energy, seemed to be filled with fighting spirit. Demon Buddha, who was bleeding and retreating, felt his blood boiling at this moment. He felt ready to go again. Buddhist light erupted, and the endless fighting spirit filled him. Unfortunately, he was not strong enough, so he was pushed back each time he attacked. The tip of the spear also pierced the black hand and stubbornly continued forward. Then, the sword and spear flew out from the black hand and into the sky, erupting with Dao Aura. Boom. The black hand exploded. The two blood fiends were stunned. They broke through just like that. These geniuses had to die. Your disciple, Ding Yu, has advanced against adversity. His fate has transformed and he has reached the Dao realm. You have been rewarded with a lump of chaotic energy. Your disciple, Xiao Liang, has advanced against adversity. His fate has transformed and he has reached the Dao realm. You have been rewarded with a lump of chaotic energy. Ding Yu and Xiao Liang had used the crisis to break through to the Dao realm. Whether it was Ding Yu or Xiao Liang, they were both good at fighting and were famous for their battle prowess, so it was not surprising that they would break through during a battle. Seeing that black hand, Chu Zan's expression became a little more serious. As expected, the hidden expert was from the ancient demon race. Still, he did not know how the other party had interfered in the matters of the Nine Zones. Two powerful Dao Realm blood fiends charged out toward Ding Yu and Xiao Liang. Furthermore, they were much stronger than the Dao Realm blood fiends of the Central Zone. When they made their move, a powerful force swept out. They had actually cultivated a powerful secret skill. Boom. The Black Hand appeared again, this time even stronger. Ding Yu and Xiao Liang revealed themselves. Even though they had just broken through, their cultivation foundations were stable. A sword appeared out of thin air and slashed toward a blood fiend. The long spear pierced through the sky and headed for the other blood fiend. The power of the slow vines also swept out, causing the black hand to slow down a little. Shua. 
Two rays of light, black and white, suddenly appeared. Life and death alternated, and the power of yin and yang swept over to block the black hand. Ren Chang made his move. However, the black hand grew stronger and stronger. Demonic power surged out, which seemed to trigger the rejection of the Great Tao. Chu Zan's voice rang out in their ears. Retreat. The person behind those two is not in the nine zones. The three of them exchanged another round of blows with the blood fiends and then retreated, leaving the northern region of the western zone. The huge black tree took root at the border of the northern region of the western zone. Its black branches covered the sky, sealing off the north region. The black tree was comparable to a sixth or seventh level Tao realm cultivator. It was closely related to the ancient demon race, so it would suffer the rejection of the great Tao if it used too much power. Even now, Chu Zan could see cracks on the tree. Chapter 375 The Spirit Devouring Flower, Part 1 Ding Yu and Xiao Liang led the human army and retreated. They did not continue their assault on the northern region. Demon Buddha led the Buddhist clan's experts back to the Buddhist zone. He was going to break through to the Tao realm. Chu Zan restrained the heavenly Tao laws of the other four regions of the western zone to avoid the prying eyes of that hidden expert. Although the hidden expert could not enter the nine zones directly, the fact that he could control the blood fiends and bring in the black tree meant that he had many tricks up his sleeve. He was probably in existence on the same level as the Taoist flying cloud. Speaking of the black tree, Chu Zan's thoughts drifted to the spirit devouring flower. This special plant seemed to be able to devour anything. Chu Zan pulled out the spirit devouring flower. The northern zone had no blood fiends, so Chu Zan was not sure if it liked to devour blood-colored spiritual energy. If it did, then it would play a major role in ending the blood fiend calamity, and he would be able to send it to assist Hei Yu and the others in the central zone. If it could even devour the grayish-black gas, then it would be even more amazing. If the spirit-devouring flower could devour even that, then would it be able to devour the aura of the Great Tao as well once it grew stronger? There are no blood fiends in the northern zone, so go to the eastern zone or the southern zone and look for Qin Ying or Shang Xing. If you can devour the blood-colored spiritual energy, this will be your opportunity. The spirit devouring flower had only reached the divine realm. The heavenly spirit cat and the sky-shaking golden rock had both reached the Tao realm. The difference between them was somewhat large. Perhaps this would be its opportunity to catch up. The spirit devouring flower's beautiful petals flickered. It was not too sure what the blood fiends were. After all, it had never seen or eaten it. The blood-colored spiritual energy is an upgraded version of the blood lakes in the Asura ancient land. It gives birth to living beings called blood fiends. The blood-colored spiritual energy is ten times denser than the blood lakes, Chu Zan explained. All of the spirit devouring flowers flowers bloomed. They were extraordinarily gorgeous and colorful. There were rustling sounds as they flickered continuously. It was very excited and happy. It seemed that it could actually devour the blood-colored spiritual energy, and probably found it delicious to boot. Since that's the case, go. Chu Zan waved his hand. With the spirit devouring flower's assistance, the heavenly Tao Law's expansion would progress even faster. He would soon reach the Daoyuan realm. The spirit devouring flower flickered and disappeared into the horizon. It seemed to be impatient. Southern Zone. Shang Xing had gathered the artifact refiners of the Southern Zone to create a combined formation, which compressed the blood-colored spiritual energy and gathered it in one place. He also refined a container to hold it. This was to prevent the blood fiends from continuously reviving. As long as he could stop the blood fiends from reviving, he would be able to take his time purifying the blood-colored spiritual energy. He had already discovered a new and more efficient method to purify the blood-colored spiritual energy. Shang Bang was also a part of the plan. After Fang Kong left, he was basically the strongest person in the southern zone, and the one closest to reaching the Tao realm. Now, Shang Bang could feel that he was only a step away from the Tao realm. However, Shang Xing's increase in cultivation shocked him. In just a short time, Shang Xing's cultivation had almost caught up to his own. In fact, he felt that Shang Xing might reach the Tao realm sooner than he did. Shang Xing's goal was to end the blood fiend calamity in the southern zone as soon as possible. After all, the Great Tao Calamity was looming over the horizon. Furthermore, he wanted to go to the central zone as well. G. Dexon. This was a genius that even his master had praised. Moreover, as a fellow disciple, he should help Hei Yu with her revenge. There were too many experts in the central zone, and too many ancient forces with long histories. Unless Hei Yu asked master to intervene, it would be difficult for her to exact revenge alone. Shang Xing also wanted to compete with the geniuses of the ancient forces of the central zone and see how capable they were. He had also heard that there was a successor of an ancient force who coveted Qian Ming's cultivation method. Great formation, activate. The formation was a scarlet barrier that covered more than half of the southern zone. Inside it, the blood fiends and blood-colored spiritual energy was being refined by the crimson flames it produced. After suppressing the nascent blood world, he had mobilized the forces and resources of the entire southern zone to set up the formation, as well as to gather the blood fiends together. The formation was a success. Although the blood fiends would continue to revive, 
Once the blood-colored spiritual energy within the barrier was refined, it would all be over. Chapter 376, The Spirit Devouring Flower, Part 2. Shang Xing heaved a sigh of relief, he had finally succeeded. Fortunately, the blood fiends in the southern zone were not like those in the western zone. Otherwise, he would never have been able to gather them together. The blood fiends' lack of intelligence and violent nature were perhaps their only weaknesses. Your disciple, Shang Xing, confined the blood fiends and blood-colored spiritual energy within a great formation and created an opportunity to end the blood fiend calamity in the southern zone. His cultivation level soared and his fate was transformed. Your fate Dao principle has advanced. Not long after the spirit devouring flower left, the system's reward suddenly arrived. Chu Zan was not surprised, his disciples were capable people, and would naturally excel during the great Daoyuan calamity. By now, all of his disciples had transformed into those who shouldered the fate of the great Dao. Chu Pingfan's strength was growing steadily, and his reputation in the eastern zone was growing. Moreover, when he killed a blood fiend, he would be annihilated completely, and would not be able to revive. This was the power of the extreme Dao, and his pathway to fight for fate amidst the great Daoyuan calamity. The blood fiend calamity was coming to an end, and a new calamity was about to arrive. Shang Xing did not leave immediately. Instead, he continued to oversee the formation to prevent any accidents from happening. At the same time, he would impart knowledge to the artifact refiners of the southern zone. In terms of the Tao of refining, no one in the entire nine zones could compare to him. Shua. Suddenly, a flash of light appeared in the sky, and a strange tree descended. The flowers on the strange tree were colorful and extraordinarily gorgeous, and also flickered with light. It charged toward the formation the moment it appeared. Block it quickly. What kind of strange tree is this? The southern zone's experts who were maintaining the formation all paled. This strange tree might be here to destroy the formation. Shang Xing was momentarily stunned. Was that not Master's spirit devouring flower? What was it doing here? It seemed really happy too, as if it had seen something delicious. Delicious. Shang Xing suddenly remembered that the spirit devouring flower had absorbed the blood lake in the Asura ancient land. Was it here to do the same? He immediately stopped the experts who were about to attack and opened a corner of the formation to let it in. Shang Xing was not worried at all that the spirit devouring flower would be harmed by the formation. As the creator of the formation, all he needed to do was to leave a mark on the spirit devouring flower, and the formation would not target it. The spirit devouring flower was extremely excited as it hurriedly rushed into the formation. When it passed by Shang Xing, one of its branches patted him on the shoulder. It seemed to be praising Shang Xing for doing a good job. After it entered the formation, it instantly spread its roots and turned into a towering tree. Countless flowers bloomed, and a beautiful light shimmered. Its roots seemed to encompass the ground below the entire formation. Several vortexes appeared that sucked the blood-colored spiritual energy toward the spirit-devouring flower, which it promptly devoured. The spirit-devouring flower swayed in a very pleased manner. The roots spread out and stabbed themselves into the bodies of the blood fiends. Soon, the blood fiends were devoured as well. All of the experts of the southern zone were shocked. This plant could devour blood fiends and blood-colored spiritual energy. Chapter 377. The Spirit Devouring Flower, Part 3. The experts of the southern zone were all shocked by the spirit devouring flower. This strange tree was devouring the blood fiends, would it become more powerful after it finished devouring the blood fiends? Also, what would happen if it turned into a blood fiend itself? Would that not be an even greater calamity? Shang Bang looked at Shang Xing with a frown. The rest of the experts also looked over. Shang Xing did not look worried at all. Don't worry. It won't be affected by the blood fiends, and will completely annihilate them. What kind of existence is it to be able to do so? Shang Xing, do you recognize this strange tree? The group of experts asked many questions. Shang Xing waved his hand. All you need to remember is that you shouldn't attack it. Otherwise, you'll have to bear the consequences. It won't attack people, and it won't do anything to harm the southern zone. It will leave after devouring the blood fiends. Don't be greedy and try to take it for yourself. Otherwise, you'll regret it, Shang Xing warned them. Shang Bang thought to himself, this strange tree probably belongs to Shang Xing's mysterious master. Shang Xing was preparing to leave the southern zone. Chu Zan observed the spirit devouring flower as it rapidly devoured the blood fiends and increased in strength. It seemed that those blood fiends were very nutritious. After a few days, the spirit devouring flower broke through to the Dao realm. Chu Zan suddenly had an idea. Since the spirit devouring flower could devour anything, and especially like dark and evil energy, it could become the heavenly Dao's divine tree, which would purify and devour filth for the heavenly Dao laws. Moreover, by doing so, it would strengthen the heavenly Dao laws. With that thought in mind, Chu Zan activated the heavenly Dao seal within the spirit devouring flower, completely integrating it into the spirit devouring flower. This caused it to become connected to the heavenly Dao talisman. At the same time, he injected a wisp of the heavenly Dao's fate into the spirit devouring flower. He waved his hand, and the heavenly Dao talisman flew over. 
At this moment, the pattern of a large tree with beautiful flowers appeared on the heavenly Tao talisman. The spirit devouring flower was happily devouring the blood fiends and growing stronger. Suddenly, it felt some changes in its body, and its growth rate slowed down. It was as if the nutrients it devoured were not only for its own growth, but also for the growth of something else? The heavenly Tao laws. Its flowers swayed and rustled, and it was so aggrieved that it almost cried. It actually had to nurture the heavenly Tao laws. Chu Zan's voice rang out in its consciousness. Don't be ungrateful. Right now, you're only providing assistance. When the heavenly Tao laws are perfected, it'll be time for you to reap the rewards. You're the heavenly Tao divine tree now. You are in charge of purifying all of the filth of the heavenly Tao and will absorb it for yourself. You should be satisfied with that. The spirit devouring flower protested that it did not want to become the heavenly Tao divine tree. At least not right now. It would take up that position when the heavenly Tao laws were perfected. Chu Zan ignored its protest. There was no way he would give it such a good deal. Besides the spirit devouring flower, he also had to make arrangements for the heavenly spirit cat and the sky shaking golden rock. Since there was a heavenly tree, there also had to be heavenly beasts. The heavenly spirit cat, the sky shaking golden rock, and the spirit devouring flower were all pets rewarded by the system. They were the most suitable creatures to become the heavenly Tao divine beasts and the divine tree. Chu Zan made the arrangements. When Tao realm experts entered the calamity, they would help him deal with the problem by fighting the Tao realm experts. After the blood fiend calamity ended, Chu Zan did not know what kind of calamity would appear next. A year passed by quietly, he was one step closer to the 60 year milestone. Your disciple, Demon Buddha, has entered the Tao realm. You have been rewarded with a lump of chaotic energy. In the past year, the war in the central zone had become more and more intense. As long as they survived this wave of the calamity, the blood fiend calamity would come to an end, other than in the western zone. Countless human experts in the central zone had fallen, and the population of the central zone had been reduced by 20%. Half a month after Demon Buddha's breakthrough, your disciple, Wang Luo, killed a Tao realm blood fiend with a blood core formation. His fate has transformed and he has reached the Tao realm. Your fate Tao principle has advanced and you have received a lump of chaotic energy. Wang Luo had also broken through to the Tao realm. A month later, Shang Xing also broke through, he had broken through in the central zone. Among his disciples, only Hei Yu and Qian Ming had not broken through to the Tao realm. Chapter 378, The Master of Qian Mountain, Part 1. Three months later, the spirit devouring flower finished refining the blood fiends and left the southern zone. It had even devoured the nascent blood world. Your heavenly Tao laws have taken over the southern region of the southern zone, and your cultivation level has advanced. Chu Zan received his reward, 31st level of the Tao realm. He was getting ever closer to the Daoyuan realm. Only one more region in the southern zone had yet to be incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws, after which, another zone would be incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws. The spirit devouring flower went to the eastern zone. Most of the blood fiends in the eastern zone had been purified by Qin Ying's great sacrificial formation. Even though new blood fiends were born later, the number of blood fiends was still greatly reduced. The arrival of the spirit devouring flower simply sealed their fate. After that, the spirit devouring flower would naturally head to the central zone. Qin Ying went into secluded cultivation and made preparations to break through to the Tao realm. Chu Zan looked toward the monster zone. After Hu Tianya transformed into a divine beast and suppressed the ominous beings, he had now reached the Tao realm. However, the grayish-black gas in the monster zone seemed to be getting denser and denser, so it was impossible to completely eliminate them. Furthermore, if they were not careful, the grayish-black gas would contaminate them and transform them into ominous beings. Half a year had passed. Qin Ying had broken through to the Tao realm. The blood fiend calamity in the central zone was more terrifying than any other zone. There were more than ten Tao realm blood fiends. At this moment, in the Qian region, Qian Ming had a falling out with an ancient force, the Heavenly Temple. He was so talented that he overshadowed the young master of the Heavenly Temple and became the number one heaven's favorite in the Qian region. In fact, in the entire central zone, he was only second to Ji Dexin. His cultivation method naturally attracted the covetous eyes of some people. However, as the great Daoyuan calamity was in progress, most forces would not do anything to harm the human race's geniuses before the great Daoyuan calamity was over. The Heavenly Temple was the first to show their ugly side, taking advantage of the fact that the crisis had eased up a little to try and take advantage of Qian Ming. Like those in the Chaos Zone, they tried to use the moral high ground to get Qian Ming to share his cultivation method with them. Qian Ming's current status was that of the Master of Qian Mountain, which had become the Holy Land of the Qian region. Cultivators would often see Qian Mountain turn into a terrifying giant and charge into the sky to kill blood fiends. Qian Mountain was no longer a simple mountain. Qian Ming's cultivation technique had nurtured it to the point where it was as strong as a heavenly artifact, and it was in the midst of transforming into a divine artifact. After Shang Xing and Wang Luo arrived, they helped Qian Ming refine it further, turning it into a powerful weapon. 
Xi'an Ming coldly looked at the other party, without the slightest intention of feigning civility. You are all not qualified to practice my cultivation technique, nor become my disciples. The master of the heavenly temple's face darkened, and his eyes were filled with killing intent. Xi'an Ming, do you think that you can be so arrogant just because you performed well during the great Daoyuan calamity? Do you think that my heavenly temple is weak? It's been a long time since my heavenly temple has displayed its might. I'm afraid the world has forgotten who's truly in charge of the Qian region. Qian Ming chuckled. So what? Do you think that your heavenly temple is invincible? Are you really going to pick a fight with an ally amidst the calamity? HMPH. Perhaps it's time for Qian Mountain to disappear from the Qian region. The master of the heavenly temple turned around and left. An old figure suddenly appeared on Qian Mountain. It was the heavenly temple's Dao realm expert. Young man, I'll give you another chance. Join the heavenly temple and you'll be the grand elder. How about it? HMPH. You're just a half-crippled Dao realm cultivator. Where does your confidence come from? Qian Ming looked contemptuously. The old man's face darkened and his eyes turned cold. Do you think you can ignore my heavenly temple just because you have some inheritance? Summon your backer. I'd like to see which Dao realm expert dares to ignore my heavenly temple. He knew that Qian Ming had a backer, but he was not afraid. The heavenly temple had a long history and countless experts. Even Dao realm cultivators did not dare to offend the heavenly temple. So what if you are from the heavenly temple? Anyone who acts so despicably in the face of the calamity is clearly evil. Someone else had spoken up. The old man's expression instantly changed. He looked at Wang Luo, who had appeared on Qian Mountain, and said in a deep voice, Are you trying to interfere in the heavenly temple's business? Wang Luo, the human genius who suddenly appeared in the central zone. He had just broken through to the Dao realm not long ago and was extremely powerful, and a peerless alchemist to boot. His formations had killed three Dao realm blood fiends, one of which had almost reached the second level of the Dao realm. His origins were rather mysterious, as he was from a different zone. Although he might not be as strong as Ji Dexin combat-wise, he definitely surpassed the latter when it came to alchemy. Furthermore, he had the support of Feng Kong. In order to fulfill someone's last wish, he had gone to the Starry Sky Palace and offended the Great Elder of the Starry Sky Palace. In the end, the Great Elder was suppressed by Feng Kong. After Wang Luo broke through to the Dao realm, he personally went to the Starry Sky Palace to challenge the Great Elder and managed to severely wound him. Chapter 379 the Master of Qian Mountain, Part 2 What? Wang Luo looked at the old man playfully. Your heavenly temple is so brazen as to come and snatch my junior brother's cultivation technique, yet you're accusing me of interfering in your affairs. The old man's expression changed. Qian Ming was Wang Luo's junior brother? The relationship between Wang Luo and Feng Kong was extraordinary. Some people even felt that Feng Kong was Wang Luo's guardian. Feng Kong was the strongest person in the Nine Zones currently. It was said that he had broken through to the third level of the Dao realm. Now, they discovered that Qian Ming was Wang Luo's junior brother. Although the Heavenly Temple had a long history and had Dao realm experts, Feng Kong was a human king. He was not someone the Heavenly Temple could mess with. Aside from his identity as a human king, Feng Kong's status in the Human Alliance was very high. In fact, it was even higher than Ji Dexin's. Furthermore, if they did such a thing during the Calamity, the Alliance would condemn them, and might even join forces to punish them. The old man's expression changed again and again. Finally, he cupped his hands and said, Brother Wang, this is a misunderstanding. My heavenly temple will compensate you. He admitted defeat. In terms of strength, he was inferior to Wang Luo. In addition, the heavenly temple was in the wrong. Wang Luo looked at the other party with ridicule. Just a misunderstanding? May I know what your request is? The old man's expression was dark. We don't care about your heavenly temple's rubbish treasures of techniques. Wang Luo chuckled and a tiny pill engraved with the image of a cauldron appeared in his hand. I'll leave this matter to the alliance to handle. They will teach you a lesson. The old man's expression changed drastically. If this matter was reported to the alliance, the heavenly temple would not be able to suppress it. Once this news spread, the heavenly temple's reputation would be ruined, and they would be ridiculed and hated by the cultivators of the central zone. There was a good chance that the heavenly temple would be ganged up on and made an example of. Do you really want to do this? When the elders of my heavenly temple return, this matter won't end so easily. Wang Luo sneered. Was he threatening him? He was taking things too far. Wang Luo flicked the pill in his hand at the old man. It transformed into a large cauldron that enveloped the old man. Boom. The old man's aura erupted, but he was still suppressed. He was injured and fled while spitting blood. In the distance, the faces of the Heavenly Temple's forces were ashen white as they fled. Junior brother, you should break through as soon as possible. Wang Luo patted Qian Ming's shoulder and said with a smile, I'm going to the Alliance to lodge a complaint. The Heavenly Temple incident was just a small interlude. Chu Zan did not pay too much attention to this incident, but he agreed with Wang Luo's decision. Ruining their reputation was the right method, and even more effective than exterminating their forces. 
Even if the elders from the heavenly temple entered the calamity, they would not be able to act because the heavenly temple was in the wrong, and had been judged by the forces of the central zone. There was still no sign of an end to the blood fiend calamity in the central zone, but a new calamity was about to begin. The more Chu Zan looked, the more he felt that something was wrong with the nine zones. Even the Buddhist zone that had been incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws showed sights of another calamity. Chapter 380. Advancing Levels, Part 1. The Tao realm elder from the heavenly temple was quickly captured and judged by the alliance, and Feng Kong personally carried out the execution. The heavenly temple's reputation was ruined, and many disciples and cultivators announced their withdrawal from the heavenly temple. Just like that. An ancient force with a long history, one that had controlled the Qian region for countless years, became the first ancient force to decline amidst the great Daoyuan calamity. Half a year later, the spirit devouring flower did not go to the central zone, but to the chaos zone instead, which was slightly out of Chu Zan's expectations. Perhaps the spirit devouring flower did not feel confident enough to deal with the blood fiends in the central zone, and wanted to further strengthen itself before heading over. Another half a year passed. Your heavenly Tao laws have taken over the southern zone's eastern region. Your cultivation level has advanced. The last region of the southern zone had been incorporated into the heaven Tao laws. Now, all that remained was the ocean region of the southern zone, which bordered the eastern region. 32nd level of the Tao realm, there were only four levels to go. As he got closer and closer to the Tao Yuan realm, Chu Zan's confidence grew. The remaining five regions in the chaos zone would soon be incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws as well. I should be able to break through to the Tao Yuan realm when the 60 year milestone arrives, Chu Zan thought. A month later, your heavenly Tao laws have taken over the southern zone. You have been rewarded with 360 Tao principles. From the 36 Tao principles that he had received from taking over the northern zone, to the 108 Tao principles from the Buddhist zone, the reward had now grown to 360 Tao principles. It seemed that this number would only continue to grow with each successful zone incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws. Chu Zan received the reward, and more and more Tao principles were added to his miniature great Tao. Another half a year passed. Your heavenly Tao laws have taken over the sixth region of the chaos zone. Your cultivation level has advanced. Chu Zan had reached the 33rd level of the Tao realm. After the spirit devouring flower left the chaos zone, it went straight to the central zone. However, once there, it kept a low profile and only acted when it was completely safe. With the arrival of the spirit devouring flower, Hei Yu's plan would be able to be better implemented. She wanted to take down the central region of the central zone and use that opportunity to break through to the Tao realm. Once that was complete, the central region and the Qian region would be under the control of the heavenly Tao laws, and she would be able to properly utilize the heavenly Tao scripture to her advantage. Tianyue Tower was an ancient force with a long history, its strength should not be underestimated. Chu Zan had some understanding of the grudge between Hei Yu and the Tianyue Tower. Her mother used to be the saintess of the Tianyue Tower. Incidentally, saintesses were not allowed to marry. Hei Yu's mother had an ill-fated relationship with Ji Tianbei. In the end, the relationship failed, and her mother returned to the Tianyue Tower, but was forced to commit suicide. Chu Zan looked down on Ji Tianbei, he should not have just sat back and watched. This was also the reason why Hei Yu did not have the slightest favorable impression of her father. Chu Zan felt that it was better to destroy a melodramatic force like the Tianyue Tower. What kind of archaic rules were those? The blood fiend calamity in the central zone was finally coming to an end, and many cultivators heaved a sigh of relief. After the prolonged battle, everyone was exhausted. Of course, Chu Zan knew that another calamity was coming. There was something wrong with the nine zones. There were even traces of the calamity in the northern zone. It was as if a mysterious force had seeped in and was trying to control the fate of the northern zone. In the end, it was devoured by the heavenly Tao laws, and the northern zone remained at peace. However, the heavenly Tao laws in the other zones had to lie low and not interfere with this mysterious power that had seeped in. It was enough to protect the northern zone for now. The heavenly Tao laws were not strong enough to take on the calamity just yet. Three years later, your heavenly Tao laws have taken over the seventh region of the chaos zone. Your cultivation level has advanced. 34th level of the Tao realm. The nine zones began to show signs of chaos. Although the blood fiends had gradually disappeared from the nine zones, the living beings of the nine zones had become irritable for some reason, and would start fighting over the smallest conflict or disagreement. It was as if their emotions were being affected by some kind of power. There were even some small races that suddenly erupted due to the oppression of certain human cultivators, massacring an entire human city. This would have been unimaginable in the past. No small race would dare to massacre a human city. 